Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be covering lab number two in the SSRF module titled Basic SSRF Against Another Backend System. All right, let's get started. This lab has a stock check feature which fetches data from an internal system. To solve the lab, use the stock check functionality to scan the internal 192.168.0 range for an admin interface on port 8080, then use it to delete the user Carlos. All right, so the vulnerable feature over here is the stock check functionality. And the goal of the exercise is to use the stock check functionality in order to scan the internal IP range for an admin interface on port 8080 and then delete the user Carlos. All right, let's save that and add an analysis section. Next, let's access the lab. This might take some time. So in the meantime, I'm going to open up Burp Suite Professional in order to complete the exercise. So you don't need Burp Suite Professional to complete the exercise. However, since we are going to run an automated attack using Intruder, it's just going to be much faster for me to do it using Burp Suite Professional versus using the Community Edition. We will script the exploit, which will take just a couple of seconds, just like uh, Burp Suite Professional. So stick around to the second part of the video if you want to see how to script this in Python. So hit Next, Start Burp, and we'll wait for Burp to load up. Okay, let's move it over here and click on the proxy tab. Next, we're going to go to view details. And here's the check stock functionality that is vulnerable. We're going to set foxy proxy to send requests to burp and click on check stock. All right, our request was intercepted in burp. We're going to send it to repeater and analyze the request. Let's make this a little bit smaller. All right, so it's the same stock check functionality that we saw in the previous lab. If you do control shift U to URL decode it, you'll see that it's calling the domain 192.168.0.1 on port 8080. So what we're going to do is see if we could access the main page of this interface, hit send, and we get a missing parameter. So what we're going to do is check if there's any other applications that are running on this IP range over here. So to do that, we could start with, you know, 192.168.0.2, hit send, and it says could not connect to external stock check service. So we'll try with three, hit send, still doesn't work. We'll try with four, Hit send, still doesn't work. And you could see over here that, you know, this might take a while in order to enumerate all 255 IP addresses. So what we're going to do is send this to Intruder. Go to Intruder over here, click on positions, clear all positions over here, and then add the parameter over here that we'll use in order to conduct our attack. So click on add and we'll replace it back to one. And then we're going to go to payloads. Click on numbers and we want it to be sequential from 1 to 255 because that's the IP address range that we want to look at. And we're going to step one at a time. So what this is going to do is going to start off at one and then move on to two and then three, four, five, six until 255. All right, this looks good. Let's go back to positions, make sure everything looks good. And it does. And I'm going to click on start attack and see what happens. All right, so at IP address 192.168.0.1, I get a 400 status code, whereas all the others are giving me 500. So I'm looking for something other than 500 that might mean that an application is running on that IP address. So they all look like they're 500 so far, which is not good. So what we're going to do is we're going to order by status. And here we go. We have a 404 on the IP address 192.168.0.190. And let's look at the response. It says not found. What that means is that this server is running. It's just that this page, which is just the general parent page, does not exist. 
So we're going to send this to repeater and play around with it to see if we could get a page that does exist on the server. So if we hit send again, you should see the 404 error. And let's see if an admin page exists over here. Hit send. And here we go. We get a 200 response. If we click on render, you could see that there's an admin panel that is available and you have the ability to delete users. Perfect. So let's copy this and make note of it. So we've got application running on this server over here and we have the ability to delete the Carlos user. So we're going to go to raw Carlos and see the URL that is used to delete the Carlos user. Let's copy it and add it over here. Delete Carlos. Perfect. So we're going to use our SSRF vulnerability in order to delete the Carlos user. So let's paste it over here and hit send. Good. We get a 302 redirection. We follow redirection and it should have deleted the user. So what I'm going to do next is let's click on cancel and check the admin interface to see if the Carlos user still exists in the interface. So if you do a search on Carlos, it's zero matches. If you render, you see over here that there's no longer a Carlos user that you can delete and you get the message user deleted successfully, which means that we successfully completed the exercise. And if you go back to the lab itself, you should see a congratulations, you solved the lab. All right, so we successfully completed the exercise by using Burp in order to automate our attack. In case you don't have the professional version or your community edition is really slow and you want to enumerate not just the IP address, but also the ports, you could script this in Python. It only takes a couple of seconds in order to run the exploit. If you would like to see a detailed version of the video where we first exploit the vulnerability manually and then script it in Python, check out the video linked on the screen. Also make sure to hit the subscribe button and check out my course if you're interested in seeing more videos like this one. Thank you and see you in the next video.